what is the difference between Komodo dragons and Asian water monitors? Large reptiles are far from a new phenomenon in the world. For millions and millions of years, the Earth has been home to reptilian creatures of all shapes and sizes. Notable examples include the famed dinosaurs of the Cretaceous and preceding eras, as well as crocodilians and snakes. However, today we're looking at a group of reptiles that don't get nearly as much limelight as alligators, crocs, and serpents – the monitor lizards. Our focus is on two of the biggest species alive today – Komodo dragons and Asian water monitors. What's the story behind these fork-tongued beasts? Are they actually different animals? And if so, what are the differences between them? Well, let's find out, shall we? Scaled Up The Komodo dragon is a large monitor lizard. In fact, it is the largest monitor lizard alive today. The beast is known to science as Varanus komodoensis. It is classified within the reptilian family Varanidae. The genus Varanus is the only one left in this family and is therefore the home to all monitor lizard species. And all also includes the other subject of today's video, the Asian water monitor. However, the water monitor's scientific name is Varanus salvator. So, as you can see, despite their close relations, the two lizards are completely different species. Komodo dragons have no subspecies, while there are six subspecies of water monitor that differ in size, geographic location, markings, and coloration. The Komodo dragon is found on a number of Indonesian islands, including Komodo, Gili, Rinka, and Flores. They live in low-altitude grasslands and forests, close to the bulk of their preferred food. Meanwhile, the Asian monitor has a far wider range and distribution. This range includes India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Thailand, Vietnam, Java, Borneo, Bali, the southern parts of China, and several other places in Southeast Asia. As the name suggests, the water monitor is very fond of water, and is in fact regarded as a semi-aquatic creature. Its habitats include swamps and forests close to rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water. Both dragons and water monitors are carnivores that prowl for prey or scavenge. The Komodo dragon is an apex predator in its island kingdoms, as no other animal in those environments would even think about preying on adult specimens. The water monitor, on the other hand, is hardly ever an apex predator, as it often contends with bigger, meaner killers like crocodilians, pythons, leopards, tigers, and bears on the Asian mainland. When it comes to size, the Komodo dragon reigns supreme. Adults range from 7.5 to 8.5 feet from nose to tail on average, and intact tails make up half of this total body length. The larger males have an average weight range of 174 to 201 pounds, while females are typically anywhere between 150 and 161 pounds. That said, these are just average numbers. Record-breaking and record-threatening dragons may be significantly larger. The biggest ever was a captive specimen that was 10 feet 3 inches long and weighed 366 pounds. However, some of that weight included the undigested meal that was still in its stomach. The largest wild one was 10 feet long and weighed 180 pounds after its stomach contents were removed. The water monitor is also a large lizard and widely believed to be the second largest behind the dragon. Length is usually between 4 feet 11 inches and 6 feet 7 inches, while weight ranges considerably from 7 to 43 pounds. Especially large specimens can reach 110 pounds. Males are typically larger than females of the same subspecies, and captive monitors tend to grow bigger than wild ones. Now let's talk coloration. Adult Komodo dragons are usually a dark brownish green, though others may be dark gray or even black. They often have patches of light brown or white splattered randomly across their bodies. Juveniles tend to have brighter skin and more vibrant markings than their parents. Asian monitors are largely dark blackish brown with yellowish spots along the sides and undersides of their bodies. The spots fade with age, meaning juveniles are also more colorful than adults. Adults of both species have special scales reinforced with bony structures called osteoderms. Fun fact, osteoderm armor is also found on the backs and tails of crocodiles and alligators. Like with crocodilians, osteoderms provide dragons and water monitors with a layer of much-needed protection. 
These scales help lessen the impact of blows from both predators and rivals. The scales of juvenile water monitors and Komodo dragons do not have these bony plates. This shows that they develop with time to help brace for the food and reproductive fights that come with age. And speaking of age, life expectancy for the two species is a bit different as well. Water monitors can live for 11 to 25 years in captivity, while Komodo dragons can reach 30. However, life expectancies for both are much shorter in the wild. Komodo dragons have a well-earned reputation for aggression and relentlessness. Their mouths, with their bloody salivating drool and 60 chompers, are the stuff of nightmares. The teeth are thin, recurved, and serrated, which makes them perfect for slicing and lacerating flesh. The dragon's drool often looks bloody because it constantly hurts its own gums when feeding. Of course, while the mouth is definitely the dragon's most concerning side, you cannot ignore the tail. Like most monitor lizards, Komodo dragons can use their tails as whip-like weapons, and these strikes can cause considerable damage to unsuspecting victims. The tail has an incredible reach, and a dragon can easily smack you in the face with it. The claws are another formidable weapon in the dragon's armory. These curved claws can grow to over 2 inches long and are used for slashing at enemies or prey and digging. Claws are also used for climbing during the juvenile years. The water monitor boasts much of the same weaponry as its larger cousin, but at an obviously reduced scale. The water monitor's fin-like tail is its primary defensive weapon against predators or rivals of the same species. Flicks of the tail can deal substantial damage and even knock a person off their feet. Now, one issue that has been the subject of major debate for years now is whether or not Varanus lizards like the dragon and the water monitor are actually venomous. For a long time, the consensus was that the gnarly after-effects of monitor lizard bites were the result of the oral bacteria in their mouths. The drool-happy Komodo dragon, especially, is often believed to harbor rotting pieces of meat in its bloody gums. This decaying flesh is said to be a breeding ground for brutal bacteria that causes fatal infections in bite victims. However, in more recent times, scientific research has shown that monitor lizards have special glands along their lower jaws. In the case of the Komodo dragon, chemical analysis has since revealed that the glands do in fact contain toxic proteins that cause paralysis, lowering of blood pressure, and even the induction of hypothermia. Additionally, these toxins also prevent blood clotting. Therefore, in reality, both the Komodo dragon and the water monitor can be said to be venomous. This venom is useful for both offense and defense, and the Komodo dragon is especially reliant on it to catch some of its preferred menu items. For water monitors, venom is likely most useful for defense, since most of their prey is gobbled up as soon as it is snatched. So, just what do these monitor lizards eat? In the case of Komodo dragons, anything or anyone can be dinner. A big chunk of a dragon's diet is made up of carrion that either died by itself or was killed by something else. However, these monsters are also ambush hunters that employ a surprising degree of stealth when going after live prey. Live prey often includes wild pigs, deer, and even water buffalo. After lying in wait or sneaking up on a victim, dragons will explode with a dramatic burst of energy and sprint or lunge to close the remaining distance. They bite as often as they can, using their front limbs and claws to help with positioning and manipulating the victims. Depending on the size of the dragon, size of the prey, and brutality of the attacks, such large ungulates may die within seconds or after a few hours. Infection-based sepsis is a common cause of death, and this is often attributed to the dragon's mouth bacteria. However, sepsis is likely a result of Komodo dragon victims wading into dirty water and getting their bite wounds infected. Komodo dragons will also target birds' nests for chicks and eggs, as well as fish, crabs, and amphibians. There is also no doubt that Komodo dragons would eat human flesh if presented with the chance. Large prey is devoured one chunk at a time. Small prey is swallowed whole. The dragon boasts specially articulated jaws, expandable stomachs, and even flexible skulls that allow them to swallow animals as large as goats whole. Water monitors are versatile hunters. Fish, frogs, and crabs are the staples for individuals who live near water. However, the species will also go after snakes, rodents, turtles, and birds. 
Monitors in or around human settlements and towns can also hunt and kill poultry, dogs, and cats. They also raid rubbish cans and dump sites for easy pickings. Carrion is also a welcome treat, and even human bodies are not exempt. Cannibalism is not off the dinner table either. Varanus lizards will also go after dead members of their own or other monitor species, as well as living juveniles. As a result, small dragons and water monitors tend to stick to the trees to avoid their cannibalistic elders. Other Notable Differences Despite having a very similar body profile to water monitors, Komodo dragons have a more squared-off jaw. Water monitors have a more pointed snout. The tails are different, too. The dragon's tail is more cone-shaped, including at the back end. A water monitor's tail ends in a fin-like shape, kind of like an eel's. This obviously speaks to the two species' different reliance on water bodies and swimming. Komodo dragons don't mind getting wet, but they are not beating water monitors at swimming anytime soon. Coloration is another thing to look at. A Komodo dragon is much more likely to be one continuous color, while water monitors tend to have more pronounced markings and patches. Then there's behavior. A dragon has the overt boldness, aggression, and territorialism befitting a true apex predator. Meanwhile, water monitors tend to keep a low profile to avoid predators and only get aggressive for food, self-defense, or against rivals within the species. While both species are venomous, there's no doubt that the Komodo dragon's bite packs a meter punch, since it can bring down a whole water buffalo. Lastly is sociability. Despite being very territorial, Komodo dragons will often tolerate others when feeding on huge meals. This communal dining is very rare for water monitors, mainly because they generally hunt smaller creatures that are far less shareable. Additionally, water monitors' swimming skills make them far more prolific hunters than their larger cousins, which means they are far less reliant on kills made by others.